Hello, this is the first lesson in a power system training series for students and other interested. It is based on an interactive tool which is available under the link below. The online training software ECSP.ch is browser based. It has been tested and verified on Firefox, Google Chrome, Opera and the beta version of the new Microsoft Edge. It is not sure on Safari and not for the, the rest. Tablets not working yet. The tool is highly interactive. It allows the setup of quite complex networks and allows to change parameters and check the impact of these changes on the behavior of the network. In this lesson, however, let's start very simple with the following circuit. It's a source with a source impedance and a resistance. We assume that it is a balanced three phase circuit. Therefore, representing only one of the three phases is, is enough. So this is the home screen. I will explain the details later. Let's directly go to the software, to the program. So we are now on the simulator. If there is already something on the screen, you can just erase it by going to the, this button here, and then you put onto the file, you put new, and then you have an empty screen. Push this grid line button so that the elements snap to the grid before you start to drag and drop elements. Now you drag and drop the elements you need. can select the element on the selection bar here. So, as I said, we go for a source and we double click on the source and we set the voltage to where we want it to be. Let's say 310 kilovolt. I just want to see <coughs> the voltage trace. 50 Hertz is already preset. You can change if you want and that's okay. Then I go to the inductance and I set it to 100 millihenries. Here I do not want to see a trace. <coughs> and then I go to the resistance. I set the resistance to 100 ohm. But here I want to say the voltage, the current and the power. So this is now okay. Now I want to assemble my very simple network. First of all, I want to rotate the inductance. It's a double click on the right mouse button. And then you connect it to the source. You see here now the connector is lighting up the red circle. Then I do the same with the resistance. I bring it close to the connector. So now the elements are connected. The only thing which is remaining to close the circle is that I need to put a line, a connection line between the one connector. So I click on the connector and I have my line and I just go to the second connector and click again and then the network is connected. Now I want to run it. Click on the green arrow. I set the simulation time to 20 milliseconds. Let's double it. I go to 40. And I go to, let's say, 400 steps for these 40 milliseconds. Let's run it. Let's see what happens. So I have now my screen here with the curves. I just increase the size of the screen a little bit. So it's very simply just drag and drop it. <coughs> and now you see this is now one run but I want to go to a looping. So I just put the loop here and now I have an infinite drum. You can see how the time is running here. And now what is very unique to this program, I can now start to change the elements. So I just go to the, cur the cursor, I put the cursor on one of the elements, which I want to change. And I can now adapt the values of these elements. You can see how I can adapt now the value of the resistance. Accordingly, the phase shift between the source voltage, which you can see here, and the load voltage is changing. The amplitude of the load voltage is changing and I can play around. The red curve is the power curve. And I can now change values of whatever element you want to have. So this is the way how you can train yourself and get acquainted to what happens if elements values are changing in the grid. 
So I was quite quick now and therefore I want to slow down and go step by step. The link below here will bring you to this page. On this page you see a couple of things. First of all, down there you see examples. So if you push on one of these examples, you will launch a video. And on top of it, you will also load the network uh, so that you can directly start the simulation yourself. So this is just a demo what I just said. You push on this one, then we get the video. If we do not want to see the video, here is the network and you can go back to the home page like this that's it on top of the page you have four tabs here the most important is the tutorial tab where you find some uh, tutorials about how to use the program then some information about myself some news and the home this is the one we are looking at now these two push buttons here and here bring you to the simulator this one is a public and free version and this one is a much more sophisticated and more powerful members version you can access it for a yearly fee of 20 francs which is very low so this is an important comment here because if you leave the browser normally all your elements will disappear so you have all the time to start again to build up your network from scratch if you don't delay the history you will always go back to the network as you left it when you left the browser so to simulate and build up our very simple network let's now make the next step let's click this button here and then we enter the software so this is the demo we click on this one and then we are on the software platform before you start dispatching the elements please switch on this one this is the grid line so that the elements snap to the grid it's easier Let's now drag and drop the following three elements. These are the elements we need for our small little demonstration network. One, two, three. Often we want to rotate one of the elements, for example, by 90 degrees. We can do that by right clicking on the mouse. Delete an element. You touch the element by the mouse until it is highlighted then you, then you push the delete button on the keyboard all elements have connectors the connectors appear as a red circle when the mouse touches it this red circle also appears when two connectors of two different elements come close to each other as soon as the red circle appears and you leave the mouse button both elements snap to each other and connect all elements also have an input mask. You double click on the element and then this mask appears where you can enter the data. In this case, it's just a resistor, so you input the resistance and you can also click on those traces you want to see later on on the graph. So to connect the elements to each other, you drag and drop an existing element until the red circle appears. And then you relieve the mouse button and then they connect to each other. Instead of connecting elements directly by touching each other at the connector, you can also connect them by putting a line between two connectors. This is how it works. First of all, you touch the open connector uh, with the mouse until the red circle appears. Then you click, left click on the mouse. Then you just move the mouse away from the connector and then you have the line. And you connect now this line uh, to the other connector by shifting one of the line ends to this connector until the red light uh, red circle highlights and then you click again and then the two elements are connected let's now play this whole game on the simulator first i right click on the mouse to rotate the element then i connect it i connect the other one just by shifting drag and drop and then i put a line between these two connectors click on the mouse then I have this line and I click again then it's connected now I go to the input put masks double click on the element here I want to have 310 kilovolts uh, and I want to see one trace from this element the U and I double click to the next one here I want to see 100 millihenries 
and I do not want to see any trace on this element and I just double click again on this one and I want to see 100 ohms then I want to see all the traces for this individual element the simplest way to remove a line is first you touch it uh, with the mouse it highlights red then you push on the delete button of the keyboard and then the line is gone demonstrate so I touch the line and then I push the delete button line is gone or alternatively I right click and I get the delete pop-up I click on the delete line is gone there is also another way to put uh, a line instead of putting a straight line between these two dots I can put kind of a fantasy line in some of the circuits this is what you need so now also there is a connection between these two connectors now you can again start to delete the line by going for each individual segment uh, you touch the delete or go this way or there is a third alternative here you drag and drop and then all the red all the lines are highlighted which were within this rectangular uh, shape and then you can delete them all together so again I put a lot of lines as I want if I want to end the line open I just double click and then you see I have it here as well then I put my rectangle drag and drop from somewhere and then all the line or which are within this uh, rectangle are highlighted and then I can delete them all together if you have now some other elements which are not in a street straight line from each other uh, you can connect them either directly like this that works but if you prefer to have straight lines then you can start here then you click then you click again and then you have a, a corner in the line uh, even if this line should not be so easily done you can also see that it automatically uh, puts the right angle or if you prefer to have a rectangular line connections you can for example do it like this and then again it automatically goes back to a, a rectangle if you have several elements in a straight line for example these ones so you can connect them all together just by clicking on two connectors and then the third element is also connected as you can see here huh? so all the dotted connections are really connections which uh, are working so let's move away remove the line let's me remove the elements so so once the circuit is okay uh, then you can input the data in the data mask so you just double click on all the elements then the mask appears and you enter the data so now our circuit is ready and we want to see traces we want to have a run there are two options either you click on the green arrow and then the simulation runs however if it's if it is the first run you have to first always input uh, this data into the simulation controls that means that if you push the green arrow automatically you will get this input mask or you can directly push the new step mask and then this one appears and you can input the sim simulation times in seconds so in this case it would be 20 milliseconds uh, or the number and the number of steps for the whole simulation time and then you push ok and then the simulation runs if everything has been uh, entered properly the green arrow is replaced replaced by a red circle uh, and then you see uh, immediately you see this uh, screen popping up with the curves you wanted to see you can move the screen around around by drag and drop and you can also change the size the size of the screen by touching one of the corners and dragging and drop one of the corners and then the screen the size of the screen changes according to your needs let's now demo so you see it has not been running before so then this input masks pops up here I want to see 20 milliseconds and uh, 200 steps are okay for this circuit let's run it you see red button 
I get my curves here and I can change the size of the screen as I like it. So in case I want to have more than only two half cycles, I put on 40 milliseconds, for example, then I get 40. Maybe I should in increase a little bit the number of steps. I can put it to 1000 and then I can even go to 100 milliseconds here. So you see, there is also an option to run the simulation continuously by pushing this button here with the loop sign. But before I do so, I should go to the new step and make sure that the following criteria is met. So the simulation time should be a multiple of uh, the frequency of the source because otherwise I will have a moving kind of uh, signal so my curves will be moving around on the screen. So once this criteria is done then I can again uh, first of all push on the green arrow and then the simulation is running and once running or even before it is running I can push on this loop sign here and then I have a continuous calculation of the curves. So you see now the simulation is running continuously so I have this loop bottom highlighted in, in yellow and I have the green arrow <coughs> changed into a red bottom. Now I have a continuous simulation and I have the traces of the elements I wanted to see. Now once the uh, simulation is running, either in continuous mode or just in transient mode in one step, I can now touch one of the elements I want to see with the mouse and then the shifter appears. And when the shifter appears, I can now drag and drop the shifter up and down and then during the calculation, I can change the value of the elements and this is a very attractive feature because then you can see the impact the values of an element have on the whole circuit. Then I can stop my simulation. Not all the elements have such a shifter. It's just simpler elements but as soon as I have combined elements there is no shifter anymore. If I want to stop the simulation I push on the red button here. Let's now de demonstrate the whole story with the simulator. So I want to run it and then I push on continuous and then you see this is now the continuous mode. I can shift around the shifter up and down and I change the elements values. By the way, important, I forgot to mention, you can also continuously show the values of the elements. You just go to this push button here and then to element values on or off. On, off. I put it on off normally. So again, let's run it. You can again change the number of milliseconds. I want to see. Let's go back to point two. Still, I'm in continuous mode. Then I just want to demonstrate what happens if you do not have a multiple of the cycle time. I said frequency, it's cycle time, of course. So since the frequency of this source is 50 Hertz, the simulation time should be a multiple of the cycle time of the source, meaning it should be 20 or 40 or whatever uh, X times 20 milliseconds. If this is not the case, you will see what happens. Then the simulation is not kind of standstill. It moves. So please make sure that we have a multiple and then it stands still as you would like to have it. So use this simulator in order to better understand what happens in power grid or in any other electric circuits. Play around with the curves. So you will really get expertise very quickly. Again, here is the address where you can find the simulator. Have fun.